Hey, welcome to 52 Masters. In this installment, we meet a really cool guy named Cole Rogers. Now, Cole was introduced to me by Guru Alvin Katakutan, who you might remember from episode two. The interesting thing about Cole was he was born with something called arthrogryposis, which means his joints are locked. His knees are in the fixed bent position, his hips are locked, his elbows are also locked, his arms are straight, and his thumbs are permanently pointed down. That being said, he was still able to learn martial arts, Filipino martial arts, Jiu Jitsu, and also Krav Maga, and develop a system that he calls Fight Ability, in which he can teach other people with special needs to learn to defend themselves with martial arts or just use it for sports. And he's also coaching instructors like myself on how to better teach people with special needs. This is going to be a really interesting and inspiring episode. So, let's get to training. I am 51 years old. I've been a practitioner of Okinawan Shodin Ryu Karate since I was seven. There was some who would call me a master. I assure you, I am not. I believe that the true expert is someone who still has a student's heart and a beginner's mind. This year, to celebrate turning 52, I'm setting out to learn from 52 other disciplines, each from its own master. Some things I've tried before, others, I'm a first day beginner, like anyone else. 52 weeks, 52 new skills. I'm William Christopher Ford, and this is 52 Masters. How have you been, man? Been pretty good. good yeah, good. drove down uh, yesterday from San Luis Obispo. Okay. Nice drive. Yep. Okay. I'm excited to do some training today. Yeah, you were over at the uh, the Gracie Academy last night. Yeah? Yep. Yeah, I went okay. to the Gracie Academy last night. Did some rolling over there. Okay. Uh, met some awesome people. Yeah, great experience. That's for sure. a beautiful facility, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, super awesome. It's a uh, bigger, a lot bigger than the last one they had. And I thought <laughs> the last one was really big. So. Yeah, the last one was huge, but there was a little bit of a parking issue sometimes. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. so sometimes you, you know you have to park three blocks away. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, I got yeah. premier parking. I always park right out front. It's one <laughs> of the perks, you know, one of the many perks of my situation. Very very cool. Um, how old are you, Cole? I'm 24. 24. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been doing martial arts for? I've been doing martial arts since about 2008. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how did you get started? Uh, I got started because I was actually approached by a Kung Fu instructor um, who was going to the physical therapy, same physical therapy as me, and uh, I'd always been interested, you know, in action movies, Kung Fu, Bruce Lee, all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. but I just assumed based on my physical situation, well, I'm probably never going to be able to do that stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was through having this uh, instructor come up to me and kind of inspire me and say, hey, I think there's some moves I could teach you. And as soon as I heard like, what, there's moves that I could do, you mm -hmm. know, that basically unlocked the door to what has become kind of a lifelong passion for me. Your shoulder, your lower body, 
your legs if possible, and any adaptive equipment you might have. So we're going to pair up uh, instructors, try to find yourselves an adaptive partner if possible, so we can kind of make sure everyone's learning and has someone that they can refer to if they have questions. And uh, yeah, let's start smacking stuff, everybody. Excuse me, uh, instructors, uh, are we using the specifically the same yeah, oh yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So, uh, Sensei Ford asks, are we using an arcing type strike? But let's say I don't have the capacity to arc. I can still generate uh, all the same principles using point A, point B, point C to the floor, and even my chair if possible, just to create a straight type motion, you see? So if uh, you have a preferred motion that we don't show, always feel free to explore your own angles. Yep, thank you for the question, Sensei. Thank you. After that first instructor who had exposed me to the arts, he had to quit teaching. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, I need to find a new place to train now. Okay. And it was that small journey that kind of later on down the road inspired me to do what I do now, which was getting a lot of, oh, well, we're sorry, we can't work with you, you know, or mm -hmm. come down and visit the dojo. And I'm like, okay, well, by the way, I happen to be in a wheelchair. And they're like, sorry, we don't think you're going to be able to get into our facility even, you okay. know, or, okay. or your chair is going to mess up our mats, you know, yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there was definitely uh, some difficulties, but it was kind of the situation where when I did find places that I felt at home at and when I was uh, accepted into schools by instructors, I was accepted with such open arms mm. that it totally um, uh, made all of the uh, people that uh, might have been a little hesitant kind of didn't matter to mm. me at that point anymore, you know? But I still wanted to uh, make it so other people didn't necessarily have to go through that struggle as well. Nice. Um, after you, after your first instructor, mm -hmm. Um, what systems did you begin to study after that? So um, after my first instructor, I only spent a couple months with him. Um, I went through kind of trying to find another school and where I settled down at was a Shaolin Kempo school. Okay. And so it's basically a fusion between karate and um, kung fu. Nice. And so there's the soft element, there's the hard element, and then there's weapons as well. Okay. And I did that for about four years going throughout high school. Um, I live in Northern California, but while visiting down here in Southern California, I met my first ever Filipino martial arts instructor mm. around the same time. And that became kind of like a side passion of mine uh, while I was doing the Kempo. And then when I started going to school, uh, quit doing the Kempo, uh, fell out of martial arts for a short time, was realizing I'm really depressed, I don't have focus, I don't know where I'm going in life. Yeah. What's my biggest passion, martial arts? What have I not been doing for the last year, martial arts? Right. And it was in that moment that I really decided, okay, I'm gonna take my Filipino martial arts training super seriously, found a school about 45 minutes away from me, started driving out to that school, mm. and then also got into some boxing and uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu and things like that around the same time as well as I was going into college. You're still doing jiu-jitsu, you are on the... Um jiu-jitsu team yes sir yes. yeah so basically we have uh the uae jjf uh the united arab arab united arab emirates jiu-jitsu federation easy for you to say yeah exactly <laughs> um they uh now are doing what they call para uh jiu-jitsu divisions so mm -hmm. basically they have 13 classifications and uh they uh, rank people kind of based on what their ability level is and pair them and allow them to compete and so mm -hmm. It was uh, when I found out about this opportunity, I was very excited about it. Mm. And it was also at the same time that I learned that they were doing a uh, US team for mm. para jiu jitsu. So I was able to join that team and now we travel to different uh, tournaments. I was able to actually go to Abu Dhabi and compete. That was wow. you know, a great experience and um, meet a ton of amazing para athletes mm. along the way that really inspire me and keep me motivated. Who are you currently training with? Uh, I trained at a few different places. Uh, Paragon Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in oh, San Luis Obispo. Okay. Yeah, um, they are. They've got schools um, all over. So if you ever see Paragon, I can definitely recommend going over there. And uh, like you said last night, I got to visit the Gracie Academy. It's an awesome experience, and I'm willing to learn and train with anyone. You know, mm -hmm. I love traveling and training, and I think martial arts is. A, if you like to travel, it's a great way to fuel that, and mm -hmm. uh, you can kind of turn that passion into a, a whole lifestyle. You know. Oh, and everybody, I forgot to say this, but breathe when you hit. Don't hold your breath. You won't be able to hit for very long. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, so now I'm going to show you this.
Is this your leash? Yeah. Okay. Take this foot pressure on this part of his foot, and then that's a toe hold right there. Yeah. Or grab with both hands, and maybe I don't get the tap, but I use it to get my foot free of the lock, and then we're back into whatever rolling and stuff we're doing from right there. Thank you, sir. I want to experience it. Yeah, we gotta get some more coffee. Very, very effective. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about some of you, maybe your some of your challenges that you've had, um, uh, and, I, and I'm asking you that because uh, you know those of us, those people who are watching, will oftentimes go, "Oh wow, he's gone through that. That gives me inspiration to get through what I'm going through." Yeah, of course. Um, but you know, maybe not just the physical challenges, but you know, maybe some of the emotional challenges. Most definitely, yeah, I would challenges. love to talk about maybe that. Maybe you could share a story about that, and, mm -hmm. you know, what, what, can you share a little bit yeah, about that? Yeah, definitely. Okay. So, what I always tell people is, we all have barriers and we all have challenges that we're going through in life. You can just see mine, I can't see yours, but that doesn't mean that they're not there. Mm -hmm. So, I find that uh, we are all unified through our challenges, but being in my physical situation, it does, come with some, I'd say, unique challenges. And um, what comes to mind is growing up, you know, naive kid, I never thought, you know, as a really little guy, that there was anything wrong with my situation, that there was any negative to being in a wheelchair. And uh, pretty soon as I was coming up through school and things, I realized that um, not everybody thought that way. Mm. Um, my teachers and stuff would say, Cole, there's nothing wrong with being in a chair and when I was really little I didn't understand why they even brought it up because to me I was like yeah you know I'm going out playing on the playground doing everything that a kid should mm -hmm. but it was 
through, you know, hearing whispers in the hallways, seeing how people might kind of like avert their stare uh, as I'm coming up to them, or even just looking at how people with disabilities might be portrayed in the media, I realized there are people out there that no matter what I do are going to have a problem with me being in a chair. And it was a, kind of a weird thing at first. And I was like, well, how do I reconcile that? How do I deal with that? And it was through that realization that no matter what I do, I cannot change their minds that gave me the freedom to not have to change their mind and to be as true to myself as possible and to pursue my passions and not be held back by constantly trying to please other people that honestly could never be pleased. Mm -hmm. So I'd say that, yeah, just having to kind of realign um, maybe some of the values that society holds important, you know, being strong, being athletic, being able to, you know, climb a mountain, da 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 da. Now I climb mountains in a different way, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that that is important for everyone to learn, no matter what your situation is. That's very inspirational. Thank you. Thank for you. That. Who are some of your, uh, who are some of your inspirations? Maybe some. Of, I, I would even say, who are some of your heroes? If you yeah, any. most definitely. Well, growing up, Doug and Fred, Doug Marcotta and Fred Mastro, I looked mm -hmm. up. Uh, to both of them through YouTube and things like that, seeing them being into martial arts. Um, as I've gotten older and gotten to go out and experience, you know, different seminars and things like that, not just martial arts related, but um, related to outdoor activities and stuff for people with disabilities. A uh, gentleman that I met, uh, Eric Weyenmeyer, um, who started an organization called No Barriers. He really inspired me. He brought me out to Colorado to do some climbing with them. And uh, what his story is, is he's the first uh, blind person to ever solo summit Mount Everest. And so uh, obviously you could imagine, you know, visual impairments trying to get to the highest mountain in the world. It's a challenge, you know, so he knows about overcoming challenges. If you want to hear about someone who didn't just give up there, you know, he's done so much since then. Uh, solo kayaked through the Grand Canyon, uh, started this organization, No Barriers, which now does clinics all over the world and helps tons of people. I'd say that he's definitely a big hero of mine. Um, a guy that I met as well through No Barriers, Kyle Maynard. If you guys have ever uh, heard of Kyle, he was born without legs and born without arms, and he was a uh, high school wrestler, fought in MMA against able-bodied opponents, you know, so you can imagine this guy's got no arms and no legs, and he's in a free-for-all MMA match with a standing dude. That's a tough thing, you know? Like, it's pretty hard to deny that that's a very tough thing, so... Hearing stories like that and meeting the people behind the stories really uh, just gives me extra, I don't know if you could call it proof, but it just shows me that there truly is no excuses and there's, no, there's nothing that can hold you back from following your dreams if you put the time and effort into working for them. Through following your passions and through following your dreams, you truly can make the impossible possible. I remember growing up thinking that one, I could never do martial arts, and all of a sudden now I'm doing martial arts, then thinking, well, I'll never be able to compete in martial arts, and now I'm doing Brazilian jiu-jitsu competitions, and having people tell me that, oh, uh, we don't think that uh, these activities are safe for you, and basically having to kind of just go out there and just through uh, doing it, prove them wrong, it really has shown me that the only limitations that we have are the ones that we set on ourselves. So if you can remove those limitations from yourself, I think that you can truly experience a world full of possibilities and you can inspire others to do the same. And I think that's where uh, passion comes into play is through helping other people and just spreading love throughout the world. I would just encourage you to just go out and try something new, whether it be martial arts or uh, anything, because uh, like I said, I think that love and passion is what fuels this world. And whether we're doing martial arts or not, if we insert that into every place that we are, the world then will become a better place. So, mm -hmm. yes, sir. You are an amazing dude. I want to thank you so much for spending time with thank me. Thank you, Sensei. I appreciate here, it. You're on 52 yeah. Masters. Mm -hmm. Once again, Cole Rogers, 52 Masters, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.